Hi everyone. Yesterday I uploaded a video on multi-level binary logistic regression using uh, the Stata drop-down menus and I was asked uh, by someone to consider putting together a video on uh, how to generate results using the syntax relate in Stata. So uh, that's actually the purpose of this video demonstration. Uh, before we get started, I, w I do want to mention that underneath the video description you will find several links. Uh, one link will be to the uh, data set that we're using in this video. A second link will be to the video demonstration from yesterday using the, the drop-down menus. And then a third link will be to the PowerPoint that was accompanying that video as well. And the reason why this is particularly important is because uh, this video that I'm, I'm demonstrating uh, syntax with is just going to be about how to generate the same output that, that I used with the uh, drop down menu. So I'm not going to go into interpretation, but if you want to know more about how to interpret the results and so forth, then check out the video from yesterday and then also the PowerPoint. Um, okay, so let's really quickly uh, take a look at the example that we're going to be drawing from. So our example is based off of an article by Summit and Marcelli where they demonstrate the use of multi-level logistic regression with a fictional data set. Essentially they had students, uh, student data uh, with students being nested within teachers and the uh, outcome variable was uh, a student report of whether or not they owned the Justin Bieber album Purpose. So in the in the uh, Stata data file uh, there was a variable called Bieber and um, it was coded 0 for does not own the album, 1 for does own the album. Uh, the level 1 predictor, a student level predictor was GPA which was centered within classroom and then we also had an indicator of whether a student's teacher was a fan or not of Justin Bieber's. So in the original demonstration they utilized a coding system of negative 0.5 and 0.5 to designate whether a teacher was not a fan or a fan. In uh, our demonstration yesterday uh, we used a dummy coded version of this which uh, we had a code of zero indicating that the teacher was not a fan and a code of one indicating that the teacher was a fan. So the first model that we are going to run is an intercept only model and I just want to mention that uh, what we're using in terms of our uh, command is melogit. Now the, the layout is going to be very similar to the use of the mix command in standard multi-level modeling where the dependent variable is a continuous variable, but we're using the me logic command instead of the mix command. You'll see that following that we have the name of the dependent variable, which is Bieber, and because there are no predictors in the model, uh, that's all we're going to have. Um, there, there, there's nothing that's going to follow uh, the Bieber variable. We have two vertical lines that are given right here, and then uh, the name of our level 2 identifier. So remember we had students who were nested within classes and classes is the name of the level 2 identifier variable. Uh, following that we have a colon that's given. So we'll go ahead and just, I'm just going to go ahead and copy this and paste it in to uh, the command line and hit enter and so you can see that we were able to generate our results just the same results as we had yesterday with our drop down menus. Now in, in addition, if I want to uh, generate the intraclass correlation coefficient, then I can uh, also use the estat post-estimation command. So I'll type in the command line, I'll type estat, and then space, then ICC, and then hit enter. And so now you can see that we have the intraclass correlation coefficient that is given. So next we will uh, generate a model with uh, both the level 1 and level 2 fixed predictors uh, added. So again we have our melogit command followed by the name of the dependent variable and now we have the names of our of our uh, independent variables. So we have uh, GPA, that's our centered, uh, that which is centered within classroom. Then we have our teacher fan variable right here. You'll notice that again we have our two vertical lines followed by classes and then a colon. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this as well and just paste it into the command line and hit enter and so now you can see that we get our results again these are mirroring those that we had uh, yesterday now you'll notice that in the coefficients uh, or this this column right here these are the regression coefficients um, and if I want the uh, coefficients that are given to be expressed in terms of odds ratios I can make one simple change to the syntax so uh, I'll just paste in the original 
uh, syntax and then after classes colon I'm going to type in comma and then OR and then if I hit enter and look at uh, the output you can see that now we have a column that contains the odds ratios related to our predictor variables. Okay so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add in a random slope for the GPA variable and what I want to do in this particular case is I want to treat uh, the level 2 variance covariance as diagonal meaning that we're going to estimate the variances of the random slopes and intercepts but we don't want to uh, estimate a covariance between them so going back to our, our commands there's our MA logit dependent variable name uh, the names of both of our independent variables uh, our two vertical lines as given before then we have our uh, level 2 identifier followed by a colon and then we have the name of the uh, level 1 predictor that we're allowing to randomly vary across uh, the classroom so there it is right there we follow that with a comma and then we're going to specify the covariance type uh, we're going to say covariance and inside parenthesis independent so when we highlight all of this and we can paste this in to the command line and hit enter you can see that now we have our output and so now we also have our variance estimate for the slopes as well as for the intercepts that are given right there and you can also see that if we wanted to obtain the uh, odds ratio we would have literally uh, the uh, same specification as before so there it is right there uh, but then following our uh, independent inside the parentheses we have OR and that will get us the same thing so just really quickly just to demonstrate that I'll copy it and paste it into the command line and hit enter and so now you can see that we have our odds ratios that are given and again we have our uh, variance estimates for the slopes and for the intercepts um, the last uh, model that we're going to just uh, quickly run, we're going to use uh, or request uh, a level, uh, an unstructured covariance matrix at level two. And what that basically means is that we are allowing the uh, variance of the intercepts and slopes uh, to randomly vary. We're treating them as being as randomly varying and generating variance estimates for those, but we're also generating a covariance between them. So in that case, instead of using the independent uh, specification for the covariance structure at level two we use the uh, the uh, unstructured specification so if we uh, use this and put this into our command line right here and hit enter you can see that now uh, in our output we have our variance estimate for the slopes intercepts and then the covariance between the slopes and the intercepts that are given right there so that uh, pretty well concludes this video. This was, again, just a quick walkthrough of how to uh, generate um, uh, multi-level binary logistic regression results using uh, syntax and Stata. Once again, I do want to encourage you to uh, go back and look at the video. You can follow along with the drop-down uh, presentation by using the syntax that, that I'm giving you right here. Uh, and then also check out that PowerPoint uh, to uh, go into a much greater depth with respect to the interpretation of the results. So thank you for watching.